à vous dire. There's no need to escalate this to the point of no return. That's subjective, sweetheart. Oh. Can we take a water break? That'd be nice. Louise, Ed, hi. hi. I love your background. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, I love this movie. It was so much. I just adored it. If that's the right word, it's funny. It's disgusting. It's hip. You know? <laughs> and you two just had this rapid dialogue through the whole movie. It's like watching, you know, noises off going on. You know, it's just amazing. And uh, so, Louise, let's start with you. You're a triple threat. You're the writer, director and star. You're a total filmmaker. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, it was it was such an exciting such an exciting uh experience um and wearing all those hats was um uh, it was definitely uh demanding but i had a great crew to support me and, and we got it done and ed you know tyler your character he's nothing more than a glorified houseboy right <laughs> um i think he's just the sweetest guy in the world and he thinks he has a plan and uh, his plan gets shot out of the sky but you know then it turns into something far more beautiful far more twisted um, but ultimately, you know, I think he finds the love of his life. And Louise, you know, you must be a real fan of movies. There are so many movie references in this. It's insane. I was trying to count them all. You know, being a film critic, I'm a film fanatic too. So I just want to chill and watch a movie with you sometime. I would love that anytime. Um, I'm really glad you got that. Uh, there's, there's lots of little, I call it buried treasure um, for movie fans. You know, there's references to Wall Street. There's references to Basic Instinct to Footloose, to Flashdance, to Howard Hughes. Um, you know, I am just such a huge fan of, of all of these movies. And, and you know, even uh, older femme fatale movies like Leave Her to Heaven with Jean Tierney or Gloria Swanson in Sunset Boulevard. I watched that right before I wrote the script and uh, say Barbara Stanwyck um, in Double Indemnity. I, I, it's, it's really an homage to, to cinema and to, and to all of the movies that have inspired me. Yeah, definitely a Bond fan because she drives the car from drive, uh, Die Another Day. Uh, <laughs> she also stirs martinis instead of shakes them. Yeah. And those gold boots have to be an, a, an homage to Goldfinger. <laughs> Completely. Turns into this warped love story. Because at first you're, you're a thief, you're setting her up, but she's too smart for you. And then it turns into this really disturbing love story because she's trying to kill you the whole time. <laughs> I mean, like the crazy things you do for love, right? Um, <laughs> That's what about uh, that's what this uh, story is about for Tyler. He, um, you know, he, he goes there to case the joint and uh, he's got a plan and uh, Catherine's supposed to be nothing more than a mark, but that changes so, so quickly. And, you know, there's some really tender moments, you know, in between all of the insanity um, when the two of them are lying in bed and she's asking him questions about, you know, what he does and he's telling her about his past and you know, he was going to engineering school and just didn't have the money to pay the tuition, you see a little bit of the, um, of the truth there and the vulnerability and the choices that this guy kind of felt like he had to make. Um, and it's a really interesting scene for the two of them. And Catherine has a really tender moment, which she tells, she tells the audience that she doesn't ever have, you know, a soft spot. Um, so I think it's, it is a very warped love story, but um, it's, it's, it's just, Probably one of the most exciting love stories I've ever seen take place, certainly. <laughs> well, you, com you commit sacrilege in the movie, eating in the 68 Mustang. How could you do that? I was going crazy. <laughs> I know. I'll tell you something, they weren't the best tacos, you know? <laughs> but you were getting it all over the classic car. I was like, oh my God, you deserve to die. <laughs> that car has a name. She's called Cherry Pie. Oh, it's, that's a perfect name for it. And you know what? You referenced The King of Cool and Bullet, one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm just telling you, Louise, I'm just like, are you single? Because I just, you know, I'm looking for that movie is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to make Catherine um, have uh, like passions that typically guys have. You know, she likes she likes classic cars and she, she you know, she likes uh sexy uh, portraits of beautiful women. And there's a lot of like neon signage in the film. And um, yeah, it's, uh, she's, she's kind of like a dude, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, and Ed, I think Tyler's only friend really in the movie is that inflatable unicorn in the pool. 
Yeah, I mean that. I mean, well, there is um, the the character of Chad, but you know, he gets pushed to the side real quick. Leave him at home. Leave Chad at home. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I think probably the biggest homage you have throughout the whole film is the '80s music. You know, especially footloose you were dancing with the cadaver you know with the head and also tyler's boots that was just hysterical there's so many cool references in this movie yeah th- i'm glad you caught those because that was exactly uh, that was exactly t- a compliment to footloose and uh, we were mimicking it and you know uh you know, catherine she breaks the fourth law the fourth wall in the movie which i thought was great but i thought it was overkill you know when when tyler tried you know only one can do it guys right only one. <laughs> that was exactly that's that's the reaction we wanted you know i mean it's like why is he doing this this isn't his movie you know? it's, not, it's my movie <laughs> and i think you know louise you you... very self-aware you know <laughs> we're kind of we want to be like we're kind of like in on the joke and we're laughing with the audience and i think you use one of the most worn out jokes ever that still gets a laugh is when is when Tyler's throwing the cadaver parts at you and just hits a cat randomly and you hear a cat go, I mean, I mean, I was dying because that's just so funny. I'm so glad you heard that. I'm so glad you heard that. Like, like you wouldn't even have a cat. Like your character wouldn't even have a cat. It would get yeah, like where does the cat come from? But you know, it's like, it's like a classic movie thing, you know? <laughs> A great we really way to- wanted to sort of like have fun and revel in all these movie tropes. So there's a lot of tropes in there on purpose. Yes. And, uh, you know, that's a perfect way to end the interview because I have to remind you guys, don't leave pets in parked cars, okay? Just do me one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. What a wonderful film. So much fun. And uh, I think you're a talent to watch, Louise. And uh, Ed, you were awesome too, man. Just had a great time this morning. So thank you for talking to me. And come visit us in Las Vegas soon. We'd love to have you. We'd love that. Thanks so much, Jeff. And we'll watch a movie together someday. Absolutely. We'll do, we've got to do film noir. You know, we'll watch Laura together. One of my I favorites. love that. Okay. Ed, we'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring Ed along too for laughs. Okay. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Bye.